Hey guys, it's Jessica here. So recently I've stumbled upon this radio in Korea and I heard this Korean music critic Kim Young-de speaking about K-pop and also P-pop briefly. So he was talking about groups that were listed in the top 50 social chart on Billboard this year. And there were three K-pop groups, BTS, Blackpink, and Seventeen. And there was one P-pop group, which was SB19. But towards the end of his speech, he has mentioned that technically, we could say that all of these four groups are K-pop groups because SB19 followed the successful K-pop business model to succeed in the Philippines. He also mentioned that when SB19 just debuted last 2018, they controversy whether we should call them a K-pop group or a P-pop group because the kind of uh, business model that they followed and the training method, the marketing strategy they used are all inspired by K-pop. However, all the five members of SB19 are Filipinos and they speak Filipino Tagalog in their music. So it's technically also a P-pop. Of course, at the end, SB19 is still labeled as P-pop because their market is within the Philippines and their Filipinos. He then goes on to talk about these three types of culture technology for those K-pop business groups to succeed in a global scale. First of all, making the Korean members of a certain K-pop group to speak foreign languages in order to succeed in that particular country. In Korea, there have been lots of K-pop groups that made a separate album in Japanese so that they can also grow a fan base in Japan. That would be an example. The second strategy is including some foreign members in the K-pop group. So this was done in groups like EXO. So many groups are like mixed, you know, they have Chinese members and Japanese members within the group. So they do that to grow a fan base in the targeted country. And the third step, which is the last, which I would say SB19 falls under, is forming a group with only the local members of that country just following the K-pop technology or K-pop business model. So in this sense, when someone asks you, is P-pop copying K-pop? Then you could say yes, just looking at the group SB19. Or even groups like Bini or BGYO, um, the two P-pop groups from ABS-CBN. As far as I know, they also follow that K-pop um, training model. You know, they had like Korean teachers and everything. However, I don't think the conversation just ends like that, just so simply because we have to look through the history of P-pop as well. P-pop or Pinoy pop is a type of music originating from the OPM genre, original Filipino music. One iconic P-pop group uh, from the 60s and 70s I know is the Apu Hiking Society. 1980s would be the golden age of Filipino music. So I think this is around the time when the very iconic and famous song Anak by Freddy Aguilar was released. And this song, my dad knows this. When he was young, he used to sing this, he used to hear this on radios. And also my other Korean friends, like older generation <laughs> Korean friends, they also know this song. So I would say this is such an iconic song, I have to say, like globally. Mid 1990s in the P-pop history is the time when Moonstar debuted it. I love Moonstar, you know, I love their recreation of the song Final Line by Apply in Society. 2000s, um, my generation, Gen Z, is the time when artists like Kyla and Nina and JR uh, debuted. Now we've come to 2010s. These groups include Manila 48, M and L48, a sister group of the J-pop AKB48. And here we have the famous SB19. So when SB19 first debuted, I reacted to their debut song. Hi. Ah, it's in Tagalog! We can check out um, what I said in that video, you know, what my personal impressions were and everything. By the time, I remember being very surprised by the people behind SB19. You know, I know they're Koreans because it's a Korean company. I think it was kind of like risky in the first place because people might not really appreciate it, you know? But then we did not have to worry at all because SB19 was a huge success. And as a Korean, 
And also as someone who used to be in the K-pop industry and also someone who lived in the Philippines for really long, I'm so happy that they worked. <laughs> Not only in the Philippines now because they were enlisted in the Billboard top 50 social charts. So that means that they also have a fan base like in the States and everything. That's something that I'm very proud of. <laughs> and then we have the Binny. If you guys didn't know, I actually auditioned for Binny <laughs> and I passed. All photo shoot and also as a signed groups. If you're curious about that audition process story, please check out this video over here. With the huge success of the K-pop idol model, now the boundary of what is K-pop and what is not has become more clear. And the factors that made this K-pop model would be first of all, strategic talent management. And I've gone through this, so I really know this well. Where the company or a producer searches who would be the next K-pop star, and they go through an audition process to pick them up and they go through this severe training. Second of all, how they manage their social media and also their relationship with their fans. I feel like this is also one of the biggest factors that made K-pop groups a success. Third of all is what I mentioned in the intro, the localized products to move forward to a bigger success, to a global success. So now I would like to come down to the most important question of this conversation, which is, is P-pop copying K-pop or P-pop being inspired by K-pop a good thing? The answer to this question, I think, would depend on what kind of person you are. So one positive thing that I could think of is that with the innovation of K-pop business model, Filipino artists and musicians can use this as a motivation to improve their music and performances. This is because people are constantly looking for new inspiration. And this new, fresh idea would depend on whatever topic that interests you. So it can be in the boundary of a culture. So SB19, you can get inspired by that K-pop business model. The second positive thing that I could think of is that the influences from different cultures is also something to celebrate. And this kind of diversity in musical styles reflects the many faces of our musical heritage. So for example, K-pop is also actually influenced by different type of genres. At this point where the world has become so globalized, it's so hard to set a clear boundary between different cultures out here because we are just so influenced by each other now, which I'm very happy about. I feel like this is the process of us moving towards unity in culture. So K-pop originally is inspired by American pop. That combined with some styles in J-pop actually. And in those bases, they added up another element that is something purely like Korean which is very hard to explain in a few words <laughs> because you have to know like the whole aspects of Korean history and culture, traditions and all that. They added that element up and it becomes a whole new genre of K-pop. So what I wanted to highlight is that this diversity in culture is something that we really have to appreciate. But what's the downside to it? And this all goes back to the question of the Filipino identity. So with the consumption of K-pop music types, how can Filipino artists and musicians maintain that Filipino personality or Filipino style? And to answer that, we have to ask another question of what is the Filipino style? Because OPM, just like K-pop, is also inspired by different cultures. What is original? What is really Filipino and what is really Korean? It's really vague, but I don't think that's the relevant question here though. Because no matter how much P-pop or K-pop is influenced by other styles of music, they will still be categorized as P-pop and K-pop. Because there will always be this element in the Filipino personality or in the Korean personality that you can't just hide. So even if OPM or P-pop idol groups nowadays are inspired by K-pop or other different types of music, without the Pinoy or the Filipino element, the Filipino people in it, it wouldn't be the same. Alright guys, so that was it for today's video. I feel like this is indeed the topic that we should always be so passionate about. Something that involves culture, something that involves two or more cultures. Now I'm very excited to know what your thoughts are. Please let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye!